episode 1 of this army tutorial series. Now if you've seen the introduction then you know what we're about to do. So let's get right into it. We're going to talk about how we can get this player to move. Uh, quite simply. Now quick, quick disclaimer, uh, for the first few episodes we're actually going to concentrate on on the logic behind the movements and the the uh, interactions with the game object and other elements so we're not actually going to be using the uh, characters that I will be putting in the final game uh, we're gonna do another tutorial about that later on about reskinning your game from removing the basic cubes that we will be using because it's much easier to run with and to develop with instead of high poly or mid poly models having four, um, four faces, uh, six faces is much easier to work with and we can just uh, swap over the logic and I will show you how to do that in a further tutorial so like I said we're going to work as the default cube as our main character as our player and we're going to replace him later on uh, so what we're going to do is well with our character selected we can well we don't need to select our character actually uh, <laughs> we can go into the uh, camera and first we're going to do is we're going to set up a good uh, camera angle for our game so I'm going to enable the lock camera to view so I can actually move my camera around while inside it and I can see exactly what I uh, what I want to see so I'm going to choose a good angle for my game now remember this is going to be a mobile game so I don't want it to be uh, like a PC game so I don't want it being too close up or whatever because you have to keep in mind this is going to be seen on a small screen so I think like that seems good and now I can disable it because I am in a good position so that was the first thing now the second thing to do is we want the player to move with the camera so whenever the player moves the camera doesn't get left behind now to do this I'm first of all going to select the camera then I'm going to press shift and click on the player being the default cube now I'm going to press control I'm going to press control P <laughs> sorry about that and press set parent to object so now as you can see when we ah, I'm sorry when we click on the uh, cube we're actually moving the camera as well when I press G to grab and now that the player moves when we move the camera we have well our first logic setup now I know this is kind of cheated uh, we're not actually using scripts to do this but we will replace it later on by um, logic nodes to do the same effect so we have more control over it but for now this is fine because remember this is development so now that we have our player parented to our camera well we need to uh, make the player move which is the basics of the game so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring up this timeline I'm going to press on the clock icon here and change it to a logic node editor or I could press shift F3 but I think this is easier for beginners now with this node editor open you can see there is a button that says new but before we create any scripts we need to tell blender or tell armory really uh, what we want these uh, logic nodes to be applied to what we want them to affect to do that we have to go down to well we have to select our object first that we want we have to go down to our properties tab for the, that specific object and as you can see the first new thing that we find is the armory traits now just like the armory player over here this is automatic drop down as well which is uh, because it's one of the very important tabs in blender in armory 3d I'm sorry so what we're going to do here is make a new armory trait now an armory trait is basically a container that will tell armory uh, what the logic we want who to give it to in this case we're going to give it to this cube so we give him by pressing on the plus not a hacks file not UI not bundled not no uh, yes nodes sorry not was was I'm, I'm sorry I, I don't really talk we don't talk about that we don't, we don't I don't I don't know anything about it we just we just leave it alone <laughs> it's for advanced people 
and press nodes and press OK. And now, as you can see, we have a new node tree, and you can tell by the icon, which is the same as this one here. And we can create a new one. Press new. Uh, oops, I need to save my blend file. This is very important because you won't be able to do much of it if you don't save your blend file. I'm going to save it over a project, but you would create a new project any way you want. And I am going to press new. I'm going to name, well, I'm going to keep the default name. name. And there are multiple ways of doing this. If I created a node tree previously by clicking here, then I could just select it from the drop down, which is, as you can see, node tree which is this one, but since we created a new one by clicking on new here, which is this one, I already have a node tree created here, which is the same name as the one we just created. Hopefully I didn't confuse you there, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's really not, really not complicated which way you do it. And we're now uh, ready to start noding out. That's not a word, I just made it up. We're ready to start scripting, visually. So, to add scripts, we need to go to Add. Or, what I like to do is press... Actually, I'm going to move this a bit higher. So you can really see what we're doing. And we're going to press Shift-A. So now you can see everything, and it's a lot of nodes. There's a lot of nodes. Most of these might seem completely alien to you. Because unlike UPBG, where it's really user-friendly, it's practically English, the nodes... These are representation of a actual uh, coding node uh, base functions, things like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know much about coding, I know the basics, but this isn't English. If you look at this, uh, a non-coder wouldn't know what the hell this is. I don't know what half these are. Uh, but some of these set canvas scale. They're very, you know, user-friendly. So we're only going to use a certain amount of these uh, nodes. Now, the f main one to use, the main one that I figured out, uh, well, the first thing that I figured out, I mean, as a beginner, back, back in the day, was the input type, which is the control, such as if you want a keyboard to, such as a WASD, to move around, then you use a keyboard. If I select it, and I can zoom in with the mouse wheel, you can see... On keyboard space, which is selected here, space, you can select anything, literally anything. For example, um, where's my arrows? Yeah, down arrow. Uh, on down arrow, down, or started, or released, uh, you can do something. You can plug this into something to do. For example, uh, material or object. Set object visible, for example. As you can see, this checkbox is not checked, so it won't be visible. So when you press this and press down on the arrow key, uh, once it's released, then the object will become invisible. Now, we need to specify what object, but by default, Armory 3D, now this is quite important, by default, Armory 3D, um, when the Armory trait is applied to a object, by default, the object scripts are applied to it, if you understand what I'm saying. I, I'm, I think I'm saying this really badly. If you leave this blank, then Armour 3D will directly say, hmm, he didn't fill that in, so what can we do? Well, we look at what the node tree is, and you see which, which um, script he's intending this to be applied to. And so he's gonna, Armour 3D is going to look in this Armour tab and see, oh, these are the same scripts. And this script is applied to this one because he clicked on that one to add this script. So if I click, for example, on the light, that script's no longer visible because it's only applied to this one. And so I'm 3D saying, oh, well, he wants that script to be applied to the player, obviously. It's the object that he wants to make invisible. That's how Army operates. Well, for example, if I have a different object, for example, a monkey, Suzanne, if I have Suzanne here and uh, I want when space down here, uh, when da uh, mouse, um, sorry, arrow key down, um, what well, arrow key, the down arrow key released, sorry, <laughs> when the down arrow key released, he wants the um, monkey here to become invisible. So, well, you select the eyedropper here, or you can select this box thing that gives you an option of everything that's available in the scene that you can see here. And you can select Suzanne. Now if we run this script 
to check that it works it's compiling I would check the uh, the console that's what I usually do but honestly it's not worth it and as you can see I'm pressing down on the uh, arrow key and when I release it boom it's gone okay well that's really simple as you can see now you might be saying yeah well that, that's not a game that's rubbish yes but if I add this um, with a bunch of other things around it that are better, that are more advanced, or just uh, a bunch of things like when an em uh, when an enemy dies, you can follow my previous tutorial on um, on contact events. For example, when this cube collides with something else, it does something. Well, you can set that invisible. There we go. Honestly, that's the base of most games. When something collides with something, it plays an animation, for example, blowing up or a character dying, then it sets it invisible. Or it destroys the object. It's really uh, the base of the game. So you might think the game design is really complicated, but honestly, it doesn't have to be, which is what I want to show you in this course. You can make something really simple, but if you get the things right, for example, lighting, texturing, sound, it, as long as it's fun to play, it doesn't need to be complicated. You don't need a really complicated, really long C sharp or C plus plus scripts to make good games that can be successful. Remember Flappy Birds? Well, if you probably know this, but it was made in two days. Okay, and the number one hit on Apple Store and Play Store. It doesn't need to be complicated. So, now that I've rambled on for enough, I'm going to show you how to make this move forwards. <laughs> back to like I was doing. So, we're going to add the on update, which means every single frame, for example, uh, in a video, when a video plays, it has one image that constantly moves. I'm um, sorry. You know, a frame. Every every frame, it's going to do something. So every image that is passed, it's going to do something. And we need to define what that is. So what we want to do is we want to move the object. So actually I'm landing on the right tab here, it's the transform. And as you can see, it, it has a, a square with a circle in the middle that's moving with an arrow. And that's exactly what we want to do. Now in Army 3D, moving an object is called um, trans, translating. We're going to translate the object. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I got the wrong one. So when we update the um, every update, it's going to translate the object like I said previously. I don't know how I could get the wrong node, and we're going to move it on a specific direction. Now, as you can see, the object is moving towards Suzanne, but as you can see, we don't really know what's going on here because we have no reference. The only reference that we have is Suzanne here. But we have nothing in the scene to tell us an indication of scale or position apart from Suzanne. So if we didn't have her, we would think the cube's not moving because the camera's parented to it. So we can fix that right away. I'm going to open a new layout tab so I can have a bigger window. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate Suzanne a bunch of times to get a bunch of references to where she is in space. And now if we play this again, with the right node this time, <laughs> sorry about that, we can see that she is moving fine and there is no mistake in uh, what direction she's moving in. And uh, that's looking really good. It's looking kind of creepy as well. <laughs> so we're going to go back to our initial layout which has our scripts in. And as you can see this is moving in the right direction. But for example, if you say we want to move it the opposite side this way, we want it to move minus minus 0 0.01, then you press minus 0 0.01, and when we test it out, you see that it has negative values, so it moves in a negative direction, it moves the opposite way, and that's how you make it move on the different axes. Now obviously this is the Y axis, which you can see here, moves on the screen line forwards or backwards I'm going to set it back to positive uh, x axes and these axes is either the z or the x I can never remember which ones are which you just have to try them I <laughs> there's uh, no indication of which is which and I can never remember but it's really not complicated you got one out of three 
and as you can see that's the X as you can see I've just done and so we almost have finished this first step of the video we now have our player and our player is moving through our scene and we have references now what we're going to need now is obviously well the scene the world and our level so the next video I'm going to do is making the actual level and um, well I'll see you then thank you very much for watching hopefully you learned something although this was a very beginner tutorial and I tried to go as slow as possible for uh, the very beginners but for the more advanced people then I'm sorry you'll have to wait for the later videos to uh, get some good interesting content and things that you probably didn't know because I'm sure there are a lot of things that you didn't know uh, but I'm you're gonna have to wait for those so thank you very much for watching please be patient so we can get to our actually um, coding complicated things and uh, also like I said this is A to B so I hope you're excited for the publishing part because I've been doing a lot of publishing testing exporting for Android iOS and WebGL and things like that so since there are very few tutorials out there I'm sure you'll be interested for that so stay tuned and thank you very much for watching